Hello everyone. I hope all of you are doing great today. Today we're going to continue with our Omologos series, which is the alkyne group. Now alkynes can be classified as a group of hydrocarbons or organic compounds consisting of at least one triple bonded carbon to carbon atoms. The general formula for alkynes is CnH2n minus 2. Now remember that the n represents the number of carbon. Now let's put it together. To be triple bonded, it means that there must be a triple bond between two carbon atoms, at least one triple bond. To be hydrocarbon, it means that the other element beside carbon must be hydrogen. To apply the concept of the general formula, CnH2n minus 2, what I want you to do is to count the number of carbons. Here we have 4. Multiply that by 2, then minus 2. You will get 6. So it will be 4 times 2, which is 8, minus 2, which is 6. So there are 6 total hydrogen on this compound. All right, so now we understand the concept, and you should be great on this now by now because we have done alkanes and alkenes before. Now let's name simple alkynes. Now let's think about the prefix, the suffix, and then join them together, we'll get our name. Right, let's quickly draw a table to have this organized. All right, so remember now the, pre the prefix will go by the number of carbon atoms. So we have the two carbon atoms, eth, three probe, four but, five pent, six x, seven ept, eight oct, nine non, and ten dec. And please remember for a double bond and triple bond, you can only start at the second carbon. Why? Because the double bond and triple bond can only be between two carbons. Okay, so a single carbon cannot have a double bond. All right? The suffix for alkynes is Y-N-E, ein. And so let's merge them together now. So our simplest alkyne is ethyne. Then we have propyne. Butyne, pentyne, exine, eptyne, octyne, nonine, decine, up to over 10 carbon atoms. Now, reminding you about the general formula, because I'm going to use this now to apply and show an example. CnH2n minus 2. So, take for example, we have carbon equal to 5. So, if we have 5 carbons, then we have 8 hydrogen and the reason for that if you multiply 5 by 2 you get 10 minus 2 which is 8 all right so you could go ahead and practice by using any number of carbon and calculate the number of um, hydrogen that you will have and so since we have five carbons this is called pentine now let's look at the formula for each of these um, members of the alkyne homologous series and we're only stopping at 10 carbon for all our um, homologous series so far and so we have c2h2 for the simplest one which is ethyne let's look at some randomly and of course you could check all of them when you are finished or when you have the time you could also practice and so let's take for example eptine which is seven carbon so seven times two is 14 minus two is 12 if we go to octine, then it's going to be 8 times 2, which is 16, minus 2, which is 14. If you think about nonine, it is 9 times 2, which is 18, minus 2 gives you gives uh, 16 hydrogen. All right, so beautiful. Again, you could always practice these on your own. Practice the one that I've skipped. All right, and see if you truly understand them. All right. Now, let's look at some examples of structural formula for alkynes. 
And so before I jump into it, as I did before, I want to remind you about something really quick. So at least you can picture this in your mind and have a great understanding of it. And so what I want to look at and remind you about is that for any given carbon atom, there must be four maximum single bonds. So in other words, to make things simple, you must have four lines around each carbon. So since there is a triple bond between these two carbon atoms, how many more bond can we have here? Or in other words, how many more lines can we have? And so if you think about it, again, if we have four maximum single bonds, we have three already. So each carbon requires only one more to make up four. Okay, so it'll be four around each. All right, so great going. Now let's look at our first example here, which is ethyne. And ethyne, if you look at it carefully, is eth representing two carbon atoms. And so therefore, the triple bond between the two carbon atoms here. Now, think about it again. As you remember, we just need one more line. One more line for each carbon atom. And so we have two lines in total. And so therefore, we can only have two H's attached, one to each carbon atom. All right. Awesome. Going there again. Now, remember, this is a structural formula. So we can always condense the structural formula to have a condensed structural formula. And so the condensed version of this will be CH triple bond to CH. And again, this is for ethyne. Now look at, look at another example here, which is propyne. And propyne is three carbon atoms. And so if a triple bond is right here, then think about the amount of lines you can put in each carbon atom. The first one, definitely one. The second carbon, you have three lines right here, or three, or a triple bond, in other words, and a single bond, which is four total lines. So there's no more lines can be placed on this carbon atom. So for the last carbon atom, which is the third one here, there's only one line. So how many more lines do you require? Yes, definitely three more lines. Awesome. So we can put on our hydrogen atoms accordingly. All right, and this is the structural formula. And so we could condense this into CH triple bond to C, single bond to CH3. And that's propyne. Now another example here, which is butyne again, the triple bond between the two carbon atoms. This carbon, the first carbon requires only one more bond, a single bond. The second carbon here, because of these three lines and this other line right here, so a total of four bonds around this carbon already. Around this carbon, you only have two lines. So how many more lines do you require? Think about it. So we're going to put on our two other lines there. Awesome going. So we know we have our four single bonds. Around the last carbon, one bond is there already, which is a single bond. So therefore, we require... So, um, three more lines or three other single bonds and then we put on our hydrogen accordingly all right so great going there and so condensing this we have ch triple bond to c single bond to ch2 single bond to ch3 all right so now we're going to get the properties of alkynes and alkynes, they are nonpolar, which simply means that there is no distinct positive or negative ends of the compounds. In other words, all around the compounds will be the same. And of course, if you look back on the structures, you notice all around the compound, you'll notice that there will be hydrogen. Okay. Another property is that they are insoluble in water. And this is based on that the fact that they are nonpolar because water is polar. And remember that nonpolar substances do not dissolve in polar substances. And so the nonpolar hydrocarbons will dissolve in nonpolar solvents. The other one is that the smaller alkynes, they are gases, just as in alkanes and alkenes. And this range from the second carbon to the fourth carbon. And the property is that the larger ones are liquids or solid. And of course, the more complex you get with these compounds, the more solidified they are. And so the other property is that generally 
um, they are more reactive than alkanes and alkenes. And if you think about the saturation, the more unsaturated the homologous um, compounds are, then the more reactive they are. So if, if you remember from alkanes, alkanes will be the least reactive because alkanes, they are saturated. Alkenes, they are unsaturated, but there's only a double bond. Alkynes are unsaturated with a triple bond. So alkynes are more reactive. All right, and again, they're unsaturated because they do not have the total possible number of hydrogen around each carbon. And that is simply because of the triple bond, all right? All right, let's look at the types of alkynes. Now, alkynes could be in a straight chain. Alkynes could be in a branch form. Alkynes could also be cyclic or otherwise called closed chain. Now, if it is straight chain, you expect it to be a straight line, one continuous um, pathway or connection for these carbon atoms. If it is branch, you will see at least one side chain. In this example, it's only one carbon on the side chain, so this is a methyl group. If it is cyclic, what you're going to notice here that all the carbon atoms will be connected. But I want to point out something to you right here is that the bottom carbons, they do not have any hydrogen. There's a reason for it. If you look closely, you realize that there are four lines. Or if you look at it clearly, you notice there is a single bond with a triple bond around each carbon atom. Once you notice that there are four bonds, they, there is no need to put anything on it because a carbon can hold only maximum of four single bonds, right? Regardless of the combination. So this is a, tr a triple bond combination with a single bond. That's still four bonds, all right? So you can't hold anything else. And please just make note of those things. And please look out for them when you're doing examination or doing your test, okay? Be very careful of the carbons with the bonds. All right. So for the straight chain example, there are four carbon atoms, and if there are four carbon atoms, they know that's going to be but, and since there, are, there is a triple bond, they're going to say butyne. For the branched one, if you notice, count the number of carbons, you'll realize that there are five carbon atoms, and this will be from the pent group. However, since it's branched and it's not in a continuous or a straight chain, we're going to call this isopentine. For the, cyc for the cyclic example, since it's a continuous or a closed chain, then we're going to put the word um, cyclo in front of it. And it's four carbon atoms. So it's going to be cyclobutyne. All right. And so this is where we're going to end for today. And I truly appreciate you watching these lessons and participating. And I know you're always coming back to keep up with the lessons and the series. But before you leave today, I want you to remember something. In fact, I want to keep this in your forehead at all times. Just never give up. Regardless of the situation, regardless of what is happening, regardless of what tomorrow, tomorrow may bring, just never give up. Hold firm, continue working hard, continue pressing on. One day, it will be better or you will see the fruit of your labor. Until then, stay safe until we meet.